Hi, I'm Lena Castellucci, a thrombosis research fellow at the Ottawa Hospital, and I would like to talk to you about our study. The efficacy and safety outcomes of oral anticoagulants and antiplatelet drugs in the secondary prevention of recurrent venous thromboembolism, a systematic review, and network meta-analysis. In patients with provoked venous thromboembolism due to transient and reversible risk factors including surgery, trauma, and immobilization, the annual risk of recurrence is less than 1%. Those patients with unprovoked venous thromboembolism have a higher risk of recurrence once anticoagulation is discontinued, and these patients may warrant longer anticoagulation therapy. The most recent American College of Chest Physician guidelines recommend anticoagulation for at least three months and in patients with unprovoked events to consider long-term anticoagulation if their bleeding risk is low or moderate. Vitamin K antagonists have been the mainstay of anticoagulation therapy for many years, yet physicians and patients are reluctant to use it long-term due to risks of bleeding, need for regular monitoring, and lifestyle modifications. In recent years, new oral anticoagulant medications including rivaroxaban, apixaban, and dabigatran as well as antiplatelet agents such as ASA, have been evaluated for the secondary prevention of recurrent venous thromboembolism in patients at high risk of recurrence. These alternatives offer an approach to anticoagulation that is simpler and perhaps offer a better harm profile compared to vitamin K antagonists. For this study, our objective was to systematically review the literature and assess the rates of recurrent venous thromboembolism and major bleeding episodes in patients receiving antiplatelet drugs and different oral anticoagulant agents for the secondary prevention of recurrent venous thromboembolism. To answer this question, we selected studies that prospectively enrolled patients with symptomatic venous thromboembolism who were treated for at least three months with anticoagulants. And we included studies randomizing patients to treatment with ASA, an oral anticoagulant including vitamin K antagonist, rivaroxaban, apixaban, dabigatran, zymolagatran, or placebo or observation for secondary prevention of venous thromboembolism. The included studies also reported on the outcomes of recurrent venous thromboembolism or major bleeding events. Studies were excluded if they included patients with asymptomatic venous thromboembolism. Our search strategy identified over 600 articles and 13 randomized controlled studies were included in the analysis. Approximately 12,000 patients were included in the network meta-analysis. This figure depicts the evidence network of clinical trials included in the analysis for recurrence of venous thromboembolism. The width of lines for each connection in the evidence network are proportional to the number of randomized control trials comparing each pair of treatments. The size of each treatment node is proportional to the number of randomized participants or sample size. The dotted line indicates a three-arm randomized control trial in the evidence network. This analysis includes zymolegatran to improve precision of effect estimates. However, we do not report the results because zymolegatran is not commercially available, and when it was removed from the network, the results remain unchanged. This figure shows the estimates of odds ratios for ASA and various oral anticoagulants compared with placebo or observation for the outcomes of recurrent venous thromboembolism and major bleeding events. Vitamin K antagonists at a standard adjusted dose with a target INR of 2 to 3 showed the highest risk difference with an odds ratio of 0.07, and ASA showed the lowest risk difference with an odds ratio of 0.65. The results for ASA differ from those reported by frequentist direct meta-analysis due to differences in treatment of study variants with network meta-analysis and frequentist meta-analysis. Additional information on this analysis technique is presented in the accompanying web appendices. With respect to major bleeding, there was an increased risk of major bleeding associated with the use of standard adjusted dose vitamin K antagonist, rivaroxaban, and low intensity vitamin K antagonist compared with placebo or observation. The risk of major bleeding was five times higher with a standard adjusted dose of vitamin K antagonist compared with placebo or observation. Only one study investigated rivaroxaban for major bleeding. This study reported no major bleeding events in the placebo arm 
resulting in uncertain estimates of effect. Additional information on this analysis can be found in the online supplementary data. This systematic review and network meta-analysis demonstrated that all the oral anticoagulants and dosing strategies reduced the risk of recurrent venous thromboembolism compared with placebo or observation. Although ASA was associated with a reduction in the risk of recurrent venous thromboembolism, the results were less pronounced than those observed for the oral anticoagulants. This figure shows icon arrays illustrating the absolute benefit to harm of the different agents for secondary prevention of venous thromboembolism. Absolute risks of recurrent venous thromboembolism are shown in blue and those for major bleeding episodes in red. Standard adjusted dose vitamin K antagonists seem to be the most effective agent at reducing recurrence but was also associated with more major bleeding events. In summary, the rates of recurrent venous thromboembolism and major bleeding events should be considered when assessing the efficacy and safety of different treatment strategies for the secondary prevention of recurrent venous thromboembolism. Other factors, including individual patient risk factors, case fatality, costs, lifestyle modifications, burden of laboratory monitoring, and patient values and preferences should also be considered when making recommendations to patients regarding anticoagulant treatments. Thank you for your interest in our study.